Magandang umaga mga kaibigan. Here's another uh, shocking revelation of Cartel Arturo Aruiza. Noon pa lang umaga ng February 26 sa Clark Air Base bago ilipad ng mga Amerikano palabas ng bansa ang uh, pamilya ni Pangulong Marcos. Muntik pa lang uh, nagpataya o nagputukan Uh, nag-away ang uh, grupo ni Colonel Aruiza including BBM kasi po si BBM Sundalo uh, armado siya by that time nakasuot siya ng battle attire with long arms and all the rest of the uh, security of the president muntik pa lang nagbarilan ang mga Amerikano at uh, Uh, tropa ni Colonel Aruiza and Bongbong so muntik na matay ang ating President-elect BBM so bakit hindi natuloy yung putukan pa panuri natin itong video ni Colonel Aruiza yung pag-interview sa kanya sa Hawaii at i-discuss ko mag-react ako mamaya okay Um, were you brought to Hawaii on the basis of a personal choice or as a result of your uh, circumstances, uh, your duties with the president at that time? It was, I would like to say, it was uh, in performance of an official duty. Uh, coming to Hawaii was not a personal choice. As a matter of fact, up to the time we were on board the plane, proceeding to Guam, our understanding was we were going to be flown out or flown to uh, Ilocos Norte. As I have been briefed the night before by the uh, base commander of the United States uh, Air Force Base in Clark that uh, we will be flown out early in the morning to uh, Gabo Airport in Ilocos Norte. Okay, so uh, to your knowledge, uh, President Marcos was brought to Hawaii according to his wishes or against it? To the best of my knowledge, and uh, fortunately this was confirmed by many people, the, uh, the uh, uh, general escort who was assigned to uh, the Joint United States Military Advisory Group, or the JUSMAG, his... Uh, Ted Allen or General Ted Allen and uh, also confirmed last year this is no longer a secret as uh, Mrs. Aquino has said during an interview of uh, Magtanong sa Pangulo and we have the tape here the lawyers have the tape uh, of that interview with uh, Radio Veritas February of 1988 uh, where she said that uh, she wanted uh, Uh, Mr. Marcos out. If he was not dying, he wanted, she wanted him to be out uh, when she was called by then Ambassador uh, Bosworth. Okay, um, you have remained with uh, President oh, Marcos. By the way, I'd like to say that, that in the early morning of uh, February 25, uh, when the news or when the responsible officers of Clark Air Force Base, uh, General Allen and the base commander, General uh, Major General Gordon Williams, uh, saw President Marcos in his officers' quarters where he was temporarily billeted and was uh, told that uh, he has to be flown out early that morning. He was... Uh, surprised because the agreement or the arrangement was that in the morning we will be flown to Ilocos Norte and uh, uh, first of all we were told that we have to be removed from or evacuated from the Clark from Clark Air Force Base because the place was surrounded by the New People's Army and uh, it was a very shallow lie we said uh, <laughs> You, you tell us the truth uh, from one military man to another military man and uh, did you get an orders from up there uh, from uh, your uh, civilian from the civilian authority to get us out of the airport by early this morning and, and uh, finally major general 
Gordon Williams admitted, admitted that he had been given an order to fly us out of the country. And that was it. We were, we were not going to let it uh, just be an easy compliance of an order. We were going to fight it out. We had, remember, we still had our long arms. We had our short arms. And we could have created the scene in, uh, in that circumstance. But uh, President Marcos said, uh, don't, don't put up any fight. Uh, did they say, uh, yeah. generals at uh, Clark Field, as to who in the higher up uh, echelons gave the order to uh, remove President Marcos and his entourage from Clark? Well, our understanding then was that uh, General Major General Williams and British General Ted Allen were given instructions by Ambassador Bosworth, and Ambassador Bosworth was given instruction by his people in Washington, D.C. And uh, little did we know, or we had no inkling that uh, then Mrs. Aquino was uh, in touch or was being, uh, was being uh, called by, uh, for, uh, for instruction by uh, Mr. Bo Bosworth until, uh, until uh, March or April of the same year when here in Honolulu, a writer, Sandra Burton, who has, by the way, written a book on, uh, on the Philippines vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, February uh, turmoil, has said that uh, when she met with us, she said that uh, she learned as early as February that uh, instructions were given to the base commander that we should be out, flown out of the country uh, first hour in the morning. And that uh, the order came from Mrs. Uh, Aquino, from, from, according to her, from her uh, uh, source in the U.S. Embassy. So dito mga kaibigan, very clear na against sa will ng ating mahal na Pangulong Marcos, yung dadalin siya ng mga Amerikano sa Guam din later on away. Kahit din si Colonel Aroisa, nabigla na lang siya. Okay? So, nabigla na lang ang party ni President Marcos nung sabihin ng base commander sa Clark Air Base na ililipad sila papuntang out of the country. At nung i-confront ni Colonel Aroisa, uh, Aroisa yung base commander, eh ang rason lang daw, eh, maraming NPA nga nakapalibot. <laughs> eh, tinawanan siya ni Colonel Aroisa, two-star general yung karap niya. So, tell me the truth. Hindi niyo pwedeng lukuhin dahil pari-parehas tayong sundalo. Ano talagang totoo? O, yun. Nalaman, directive ng Washington, D.C. na ilipad palabas ng country ang Marcos family. So, very clear na it's a serious case of kidnapping. Kaya nga, meron akong blog na unang blog na ano, US government ang number one human rights abuser. Kaya wag silang magmalinis na kunuhay right to sila, they are after human rights na mismo ang uh, human rights ng Marcos family and the millions of Filipinos who love the Marcos family inabuso ng US on this fateful day ng February. I think 26 na ito, palabas na sila sa Clark Air Base. So yun, nung nalaman na i... lalabas na sila sa country, as anong sabi ni Colonel Arreo, we will put up a fight. Hindi namin yan susundin. So, kahit ako, by, uh, talagang lalaban ako. And I believe, Lahat gustong lalaban, including BBM. Kasi by the time, armado po si BBM. Makita nyo yung picture nila sa Malacanang, nung, uh, sa balkonay ng Malacanang nung mag-bid uh, goodbye na ang presidente. Naka-inipormi si BBM eh. Battle attire. Yung kitang-kita ko pa dito sa kanyang inipormi. Kitang kita yung tatak ng uh, tabak, yung scout ranger uh, tabak. <laughs> Ang pinaka-the best na sundalong army is scout rangers. 
at saka yung special forces. Nandun lahat kay BBM. They're willing to fight. Kasi, kidnapping na yun eh. Lalaban na. Okay. So, nangyari sana ang second Philippine-American War. Doon na sa Clark. Okay. So, hindi natuloy ang labanan sa EDSA or sa Malacanang. Dahil pumayag ang presidente natin na para walang magkagulo, eh, malis na lang siya, kailang papuntang Ilocos Norte. Eh, nung malaman na nila ang panluloko ng uh, Amerikano na hindi naman pala Ilocos Norte, papuntang uh, US naman, eh, labanan na yun. Kung ako, labanan na yun. And I believe, bongbong, at the time na matured na siya, Willing to fight for his country, for his father president. Laban na yan. Colonel Arisa, laban na yan. Kung ako by the time, laban na yan. Patayan na kong patayan. So bakit hindi natuloy ang labanan? Again, yung greatness of the president. Sa Malacanang, sabi niya kay General Ber, No, disperse the crowd without firing on them. Nakaredi na lahat. Artillery assets, air assets, elite troops, marines, rangers, special forces, name it, zeal, yung fighting guest unit ng Navy SEALs. They're ready to storm Ramos and Enrile. And anybody. But the president said, no. Walang putok. Walang labanan. Alis na lang tayo. Malis. Oh, ang last na testing is doon na pala sa Clark. Pwede na rin siyang mag-decide na laban na lang doon. Total, kakaunti naman lang ang involved. <laughs> Tapos, Amerikana na. Dayuhan na. <laughs> Kasi sabi ng presidente, kung dayuhan, yes. <laughs> Labanan ko, kailang huwag ng kapwa ko Pilipino. Yun, Amerikano na yun. On that day, pwede siyang magutos na lumaban. But then, sabi niya, no. Doon mo makita ang pagkamahinahon ng ating, lalo ako talagang sumasaludo kay President Marcos dahil dito. So, hindi natuloy ang putokan sa Clark, kiyera ng Pilipino-American soldiers. Natuloy yung kidnapping. Bakit ganun na lang ang desisyon ng presidente? Because nakita ko, he feared God, he trusted God na someday God will give them divine justice. At ito na nga, after 36 years, divine justice has come at yung junior na si Bongbong pumalit na presidente sa kanya.